Welcome back to Hometown Heartbeat. I am Zach Walker, your big, beautiful, bearded host uh, of Hometown Heartbeat here on VNN with checking in with producer Connor and DJ Dallas. Uh, we have a surprise for you today, special guest. Uh, my 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 best friend's wife is an educator and she's up in the Ardmore system and they are uh Ardmore is a great supporter of this show and the principal has has asked uh asked through my best friend's wife she she texted me and said hey my principal wants to be on your show and I think it was a conversation I was having on government education government schools and some of those things and you you had some light you wanted to shed for us on that or have a conversation or dialogue about it anyways but well but yeah but before I do that I, I I had the worst experience on my way into the studio this morning. It was absolutely <laughs> terrible. Uh, stopped and uh, to fill my truck up with gas, and uh, truck pulled in beside me there with the uh, and it, and it appeared appeared to have concrete. You know those Whirly Bird concrete finishing, a very heavy looking truck, and and the guy forgot to put it in gear when he got out, and it rolled right across his toe. His, his, and he really? had steel toed boots and it just squashed his toe down into his down into his uh i mean squashed his shoe boots. right down into his yeah. yeah right down into his toe oh he's fine now we we called a tow truck <laughs> uh well played mm-hmm. principal brian well played uh that uh that's dallas you don't do any any good laughing off mic you don't do any good laughing off mic turn the mic on when you laugh okay you gotta it, okay so i have dad jokes all day so, but that's not what you called me down no, here to I, talk no, that's I, not I, what, I love what that. we want to talk about i love and, that though and i and i tell you what as a follow-up segment to your um word of the day you need to do a southern grandpa word of the day Oh yeah, and most absolutely. Of, and most of those words are not really even words. Jeet jet, no, <laughs> do y'all do? Yeah, no. And I, and I, I know exactly what they mean, and I, I still the hairs still rise up on the back of my neck when I hear somebody go ah. <laughs> Because I know something's fixing to bad, it's fixing to happen to me. Because Granddaddy is uh, my great grandma would do that to me, like I'm like I do it to my dog. You know, my yes. dog goes to ju- no jump on. Some, ah, ah. Yeah, yeah, that's how my great grandma talked to me. Don't do that, you'll get in a fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's guy. He's clowning on you, Dallas. Clowning on you. Yeah, you're getting a five. Oh, uh, because you, you could. If, if that's the case, you could just shorten every word to the first two letters, uh, and and you know we could go to school. My yeah, there you go, school. My stepmother lives in Kentucky. My my dad and stepmother live in Kentucky, and and Lord help. I mean, it is just awful. Uh, I have to. I say. I say again. You know, uh, tell me one more time what you said because yeah. I just didn't quite get it. Run that by me again. Yeah. yeah. No, it's well, it's hard to understand. One more again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's so good all right so to talk about what uh what what created this and we're going to set it up and then we've got a, a, a break and when we come back we'll really dive into it but essentially this conversation we were having was at the time we were talking about indoctrination in the schools and how the liberal media and and how the school systems that are you know I, I think i made a comment about the department of education and how how really in the in the core of this country we weren't established to have a federal governance of the education system but the states were supposed to be in charge of that and how the government has grossly overreached into education and and my well, i guess my thesis was along the lines of if you look at the curriculum today and you look at the way that history is being taught and the way that um that that civics is being taught a lot of the things that are are, are whitewashed or, or you can't say that anymore you, you just washed from history um are, are, are things that it, it it presents in my opinion and i've got a mom that was in education a sister that's a master's that was in education before she had kids and um it, it just appears to be that there is a left-leaning a left-leaning bias to a lot of the curriculum and teaching and certainly in higher education you you send your kids off to higher education uh, uh, you know and you pay for an indoctrination by a liberal college now that being said and one thing i didn't say on the air that i want to preface before we have our conversation on the other side of the break is that i also wasn't necessarily talking about down home alabama like some of because it's a little bit different uh, but but that is my thesis and we're gonna i mean you comment on it and then we'll dive into it we got a break here in about a minute but we could dive into it when we get back but but i mean kind of what what was when you heard that you immediately reached out the, to autumn and said i, I want to talk to this guy yeah so, so the the thing that you said there that is forgotten i, I everything you said is correct uh factually um I, you know i don't believe anybody would argue with you about the liberal bias um especially the further you get away from 
my school. Um, you know, and nobody wants to say that that it's taking place in their sure, uh, in their sure. circle. But the uh, the the thing that you forgot is that all education is still done locally. I mean, it's it's all all uh, uh, pre college. Uh, you know elementary and high school education is done locally by our neighbors um and and i can assure you that none of those things apply to the school where i currently serve um the 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 history is taught as, as history as it and and moral values although we don't have a morals class they see by example and so that's why it's incumbent on me to make sure that i put quality staff in front of my students um that have the, you know the moral fiber sure uh that that kids need to see but a lot of the power has been taken from you and and and, and this is a, this is this is across the board now in the south obviously because the mob has the power right now the parents have the ability i mean when i grew up when when i got a bad grade my mama looked at me and said fix you greater i'll whoop you <laughs> yeah. nowadays it's or an email a... to a teacher it's a hey, little johnny little johnny deserves a i know it says c c plus but a c plus and a b minus are the same thing so he really deserves a b a, you know a b minus yeah i'm not gonna argue with you that 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 that, that so conversation how do you deal, doesn't but take, how do you deal with that well you just hold you you you, you uh you know i hate to even say this out loud but um i you know i still paddle and when it works, oh, it works. you better. Uh, you you realize we're broadcasting. Right, I do principal? realize you're broadcasting, okay. and it's in the handbook. And okay. I, and it's not the first. You option. still got a paddle? I still have a paddle. When and was I, the last time you got to use it? Oh Lord, uh, probably three or four times last year. Oh, okay. Well, hey, I might not, send my not, I might a, send not my a kid first, to Armour. Not a first option. Uh, you know, not the not the like it was back when I was in school. Um, Sure. No, and when we come back, we've got lots to talk about in terms of education, liberal bias, government schools. Uh, you're listening to Hometown Heartbeat on WVNN. I'm your big, beautiful, bearded host. We're Glenn Bryant, principal of Ardmore High School. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hometown Heartbeat. I am Zach Walker, your big, beautiful, bearded host. Checking in with producer Connor and D -D -D DJ Dallas. We are joined by Glenn Bryant. The prince, I almost said the president, the principal of Ardmore High School. Uh, Glenn listened to a segment we did a few weeks back about um, my indictment of the the liberal government school system that that is under that's overtaken the uh, education system of the country. And he reached out to Autumn Rowe, um, the one of the finest one of the finest educators in the world. Uh, I promised course. I wouldn't talk about her today. So. Oh, well, now you shouldn't have told me that. <laughs> you shouldn't have told me that because she's watching right now, and I, I guarantee you she's sweating. Yeah, she's the best at what she does. I promise you. She's no. the best high school counselor I've ever No doubt about that. Yeah. You should see her closet. Uh, Lord have mercy. I don't know if you're friends with her on Facebook, but she's, you know. I, it's my understanding she's cleaning Woo! out. <laughs> well, she got a lot to clean out, too, boy. Uh, when, when I say closet, she took over a spare bedroom at their house, um, and it's all her closet. Um, so, needless to say, she got plenty to clean out. Autumn, I love you. Um, she's re She really is great. You guys have a good you, – you've got a great staff up there, and, and you guys are um, – I mean, the fact that you still paddle. In the break, you got a message from one of your previous students. Yeah, so a uh, shout-out to Jarrett Sandlin. Um, wherever you're serving today, son, thank you and for your service, and uh, keep doing great work. Thank you for your service. He, he said, uh, I got paddled by you once, and I'll never forget it. Uh, and that's the reality of, of discipline and the way discipline works. Uh, it, you know, you've got to make an impact and, and make a statement in someone's life. For the, If someone's breaking the rules or disobeying or, or acting crazy, the only way to break that behavior is to reinforce a negative habit with, with, with some level of discipline to, to, uh, to kind of discourage yes, that level I, and, of, I, and i promise you before that we get to that we've tried everything uh it's not a, not a first option that's uh no that's so that's that's awesome but no so the you know the the big overarching thesis of the conversation uh in you know is, is around the fact that the originally as and as i understand it now I, I don't claim to be a smart man um you know this is the smartest show on radio because we have connor but i don't claim to be a smart man but the way I understand the Constitution and the way this this government was originally set up, the education and the governance of education was supposed to be a state's rights issue, right? 
That's correct. And, and, it, and it was actually supposed to be funded and correct and managed at the local level. And so, it, it, in my estimation, uh, just a simple Southern boys ed, ed, estimation here, um, what probably happens is um, because as as with all as with all chains, the the federal government has the ability to put on different institutions. It's typically tied to funding. That's correct. The the need for that funding is probably originates with a lack of management of funding at the local level. That's correct, and or inadequate so, funding, or inadequate though. funding, which is which is a problem. I mean, ad valorem that's, taxes that's, is something that that goes to education in a lot of places, like Madison, for instance. Madison had an ad valorem tax problem. Me, me and uh, Mayor Paul Finley talked last week about their retail base. You know, bringing in that target and that center alone puts put put two million dollars in taxes local in, in their in the, but but in Madison they had a problem with with like there wasn't enough. Huntsville had all the that's the correct. retail space, and so anyway, so I, I you know if we look at the in you know the genesis of of where we've gotten to today it starts as with all things with money if you follow the money you'll typically find the genesis and so that being said um I, my questions kind of go around uh and if you have a question about the the education system and anything you know how i'm an outspoken critic of the government schools and and the way that the that that educators are forced to teach a curriculum that is leaning one way or the other. I, you give us a call, 1-866-494-9866, 1-866-494-WVNN, and then we can let you in here to talk to Principal Brian of Ardmore High School. But one of the questions I have, practically speaking, like you've you've acknowledged that at a lot of at a lot of places there's a liberal bias to education but we we said not here and so my question to you is like is it is it curriculum and if so who chooses that where is it signed off at yeah curriculum is uh is approved at the local school board in the state of alabama okay uh so the state uh the state sends a, a course of study but at the end of the day the uh the local school board determines the um approves the curriculum the textbooks that were used um and any courses that we choose to offer uh the local school board uh, does that which they're meeting by the way tonight so i'm sure they're to discuss the um reopening plans and that that sort of thing which we'll dive into uh certainly but 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 you know the reality is this i'm not an advocate for a one-sided approach by any stretch i want my son to learn left right center up down sideways like i want him to understand i I want the riots of tulsa to be taught in school i want the confederacy and slavery and the great injustice that we as a people inflicted on black black people that were were stolen and brought over here I want it all to be taught ugly because history is the only roadmap we have keeping us out of the ditches we've spent yeah, years if you don't, in, if right? you don't learn from history, you're destined to repeat it. And and so, you know, it, it's just, it, I don't, what I don't like is the fact that a lot of times educators, and, and you can speak to this and, and, and you've made it clear, not in your school, but across the board. And, and by the way, we're not talking about a- Alabama education right now. We're talking about the education system in general at a national level on the whole. So this is not an indictment of our teachers and, and, and I'm not attacking our education system. I am saying that oftentimes pastors do it, uh, radio hosts do it, teachers do it. Human beings will take the platform they're given and inherently will put their views, their opinions, their politics, their religion into what form they have. Um, some, like for me, I'm a radio host. I, this show is about what I want it to be about. If the people don't want to listen to it, I won't be here very long. So I have the right to put whatever I want into this. But educators should be held to a standard of, of the curriculum. They're, teach what's in the book and what actually happened, not the social commentary. And I see a lot of that being injected into education across. I mean, you see teachers unions in L.A. and California. And uh, there was another one that just came out that said, we're not reopening schools until illegal immigrants get um, get housing subsidies. And it's like, that's not your that's not your platform. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. So how do we avoid I mean, how do we avoid that? Well, I, th- I think, you know, Alabama uh, is right on target with the right to work um, and the and the absence of unions you know the the i'm a member of the aea i think they do good work i'd love to see them do a lot more in the professional development um side of things you know to help teachers learn strategies to teach content uh rather than advocate for uh substandard uh 
substandard teachers to continue to be employed. But uh, you know, you, you got to have something. You got to have some kind of uh, checks and balances so that um, a principal, for example, or a person that does the hiring doesn't only hire their relatives. Uh, which se- seems to be something that uh, Alabama's Oh, John familiar. Boy and Billy down yeah. there, they know a thing that, or well, two about history. They my first cousin too. Yeah. <laughs> so That's right. the um you know, so they do serve a purpose, uh but the the I really do wish I, they would uh, spend more time in the professional development um world of things. There's a professional organization for uh administrators called CLASS, uh Council for Leaders of Alabama Schools, and they dabble a little bit in policy and uh advocacy for uh school you know teacher rights and that our teacher you know pr- uh, better pay and that type of thing but they're primarily uh their their major function their mission is to to educate folks and so when the leader gets better everybody gets better sure. so they invest in in leadership training for school leaders and educational and advocacy is not what we're talking about in terms of injecting policy and politics. Uh, but we, what we're talking about is more along the lines of these teachers go into the classroom and what they what they believe and all that stuff. It just seeps into what they're teaching. When we get back uh, from the break, we will talk about the reopening plan, what that means for you. Um, if you're a parent that needs to go back to work, we'll talk about virtual options. We'll talk about in-class. We'll talk about everything we're doing to make your life easier. Uh, this is Hometown Heartbeat. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hometown Heartbeat. I'm your big, beautiful, bearded host, Zach Walker. We are here with producer Connor, DJ Dallas, and principal Glenn Bryant of Ardmore High School. Um, if you're just joining us, Glenn listened to a segment where I talked about education and the issues that I have with education being indoctrination centers, I believe is the phrase I used for the liberal agenda. And Glenn took uh, took exception to that and, and wanted to have a conversation clarifying those things, which we've done. And, and so just so those of you, you know, a lot of times when you have a platform like this, which by the way, I, I've only had for like three weeks, I'm still pretty new at this. You, you don't necessarily understand that you have to everything you say can be heard in a bubble and they might not have heard the last 10 shows they might not understand where you're at they just might hear 30 seconds and if i say that uh, the local school system is an indo- or if i say the school system is an indoctrination center for the left people are going to say athens high school is not a ardmore high school is not a you know whatever and we're not talking about us we're talking about it at, at a national level and so we've kind of I've kind of clarified those things, but now we're going to talk about the Rona uh, and Rona and reopening. Um, and so if you have questions or com- – this should probably get people calling because um, the, the Rona and reopening plans are quite the quite the hot debate right now. So if you have something to – a question to ask, a comment to make, uh, or you just want to complain or, 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 or you maybe you just want to call and encourage Glenn um, because what Limestone County is doing right now, we believe, is leading from the front. Um, um, and so you can give us a call, one 494 wvnn Essentially, what Limestone County has said, we recognize that you may not feel comfortable, so stay home. There's a virtual option. That's correct. But we feel like we play, and you said it beautifully off air. You said you realize that you play a bigger part in a bigger economy. And most people don't think about schools playing a part in the economy, but what you do is, is allows for parents – to go and contribute to the economy. That's correct. And if and if we don't do what we do, what we we need to understand, you know, we, we have to understand as school leaders is that when we're closed, uh, virtual. I mean, essentially the the economy is shut down because mom and daddy, somebody's got to be at home with uh, Johnny and Susie. I heard a conversation about Corona privilege, um, and it yes. was and it was really, really it was really actually enlightening because it was a it was a single mother That's who correct. had to work just to and so the stimulus came in and unemployment came in, but um, she was a tip she was a server or whatever right. so the 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 unemployment wasn't like it like it's been for a lot of people who won't go back to work now because they make more money on unemployment than they do working, but th- she said I don't have I don't have the option. That's, that's I, correct. I don't, I mean, if I don't go to work, I don't pay my bills. My kids don't have a place to sleep. We don't have internet. We don't have. How are we going to virtually learn? And I and I think your upbringing has something to do with your how you make that decision, how you think through that decision. I think back to you know what but what would my mother have done? Sure. Uh, at that point in time, it, it, we had the coronavirus in eighty three. Um, you know what decisions would she have made? Um, if the coronavirus would have happened in eighty three. Nobody would have even talked about it. <laughs> yes, right. We they would have just got up, gone to work, well, and, and and been like, "Oh man, you you're got right. the flu." That was before CNN. So, oh man, 
I mean, um, it's, this thing's been a politicized and agenda sized so much. It's it's you don't even know what's real and what's not anymore. That, that's correct. So um, with with respect to reopening, I am tickled to death. I'll do anything short of be, ask, somebody asked me, "Are you going to wear a mask? You going to wear a mask?" Yes, I'm going to wear a mask if that's what I'm asked to do. Uh, I'll be do anything short of becoming an Auburn fan to uh, to, <laughs> to get to to get to have kids back on our campus and and um, and and do some face to face learning again. No, that's exactly right. And so the reality is, uh, Limestone County decided. Madison Huntsville said we're going to do the first nine weeks from home. Parents everywhere uh, went into a deep state of depression. Uh, jobs, you know, business owners all, everywhere said there goes our workforce. The economy is going to obviously take a hit. Limestone County, not to indict anybody else for their decisions, but we've decided that we we feel like we've got a good plan in place. So what is it going to look like? What what is uh, the the PPE the plans? I mean. What does so it look like? The, like I said, the Board of Education will meet, will meet tonight. They're going to approve a reopening plan that does propose, um, or, you know, I, I don't know whether they'll approve it or not, but uh, I hate to even try to speak for the board. Uh, it does it in, uh, uh, address some an enhanced PPE for, for everyone, uh, whether we're all being masked or not. You know, that we'll see come tomorrow morning when the probably when the, probably yeah. will be um i do i do know that on our campus we've made every you know we've we've uh done as much as we can so we're not going to use lockers um at least the first nine weeks we're going to try to get started and see what it looks like we're not going to um eat in the cafeteria for example we're going to eat in, in our classrooms to limit the possibility of exposure lunch and, and learn and yes that's correct uh and the smart teachers will use every minute i just increased their teaching time by about 20 minutes that's right that means um, more homework they, yeah my favorite word more homework um the uh the, we are we're gonna say you know we've we've been very proactive we've we spent um probably uh, on, on my campus probably 15 um to, well maybe not that much eight seven eight thousand dollars in additional um sanitizing equipment mm -hmm. so we've got the victory sprayers of uh, we got enough of, of those on our campus that we can uh sanitize our entire campus and make the kids stop when they walk in spray them down well them no, i'm probably oh, not going to okay. fumigate kids. well i just i mean, i figured it may work you well, know? It, uh, hit it, them with a uv light yeah <laughs> get them uh, get them all sanitized yeah that, them government schools yeah that's yeah. right the government schools uh, no, we're gonna do that we're gonna do everything in our power to that we are that we're aware of that we can do to uh, um limit exposure and limit time together you know in close proximity uh, so that we can uh, continue to have school as long as we can now uh, one of my principal buddies says that he thinks that we will be uh, out again by labor day i, I don't know I what don't to see do that happening i, I don't think meemaw is going to do that well, by the way, I, Meemaw, I, we affectionately I, refer to K.I. as Meemaw. Yeah, yeah, and I, I get in trouble every time I do that. Mother Everybody says, loves their Meemaw, Ma, though, so there's nothing bad Mama about it. Mama says I'm insulting grandmas everywhere when I do that. Oh, but, <laughs> <laughs> oh any, Glenn, Glenn's a trip, man. At, at, at any rate, the uh, the the the... Um, I don't even know where I was well, going. Well, what with happened that. was you saw the, the the headline that said uh, Graceland introduces immersive Elvis experience, which really threw me for a loop. How do you immerse yourself yeah. in a in a dead uh, rock star well, or singer? <laughs> bless your um, heart. Yeah, bless her heart. But so I no I. I I, I hear what you're saying, and and I um I we we appreciate you and, and your effort. You guys really are out there on the front lines now. Front lines of what is the question we all have to ask? I do have one question that you just peaked. It's not coronavirus related. It's homework related because when you said when we talked about that a minute ago. So I've coached baseball for a long time, and I've got I mean have you know a lot of kids after school coming in talking. And the the number one thing I hear about is the amount of work that gets sent home in the afternoons and the amount of time that is spent and and the busy a lot of it a lot yes. of it busy work. So how do we attack that problem in this country? So, so one of the things that, um, you know, coronavirus did a lot of things, but one of the things it really did for me uh, is it made me think about um, looking at the quality of work that my teachers send home. Uh, and so when we did those packets for those, you know, at the, at the end of the school year. Yeah, I that, remember Autumn having to pull yeah, all that just, stuff together. Oh, Lord, like, it was, you know, some of it, some of those packets were three or 400 pages long. Well, not woo! that big. They were, they were 200 pages, though, for real, like, uh, one of the grade levels. And, and I, when you get to looking at what they were actually trees doing. trees in the making of those packets. The, the, the focus for us is really going to have to be on quali quali quality, not quantity. Uh, and making sure that what we do is relevant. Uh, and it doesn't really matter how much time. I have two kids. I, one's 24, one's 20. Uh, one of them could read it and be done, and he, um, you know, make an A on the exam. 
Uh, my daughter, on the other hand, uh, she's going to she's going to make her A, but she has to work. So it really has to. It really depends on the child as how much they need. Uh, but I really want to. Uh, one of the things we're going to talk about when we come back to school is uh, focus on the quality of what we're sending home and not just the quantity. It doesn't matter how many minutes it is; it's the quality of what we're what we're sending home. No, that's good, and that's the thing is is life is so much bigger than uh, than 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 homework and schoolwork. I mean. The, the most I, look i was not by any by any account of anyone that knew me i was a terrible student um i was incredibly smart i got great i got good grades because i didn't have to study and i was smart enough to get good grade but i was a terrible student and and part of that was like when i went home I went outside, I played, I ran around, I lied to my parents, told them I did my homework, uh, and I turned out okay. I didn't get a college degree, I didn't, and, and I'm still a, a decently, relatively normal functioning societal member, and so that the, the, the amount of homework that's getting sent home is just, it's, I mean, kids are up till all hours of the night doing homework, they can't have extracurriculars because it interferes with their homework, and I just feel like you've got enough hours in a day to teach what you need to teach. Well, I, 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 I agree and I disagree. Um, on the one hand, and, you know that massive number of hours uh, that kind of just a busy work uh, you know that's that's useless but uh research does show the more times that you touch a content the sure. more likely you are to learn it no so, i'm okay with a reasonable like yeah. with, with, with taking it first of all teaching discipline and responsibility you've got something that you've got to do outside of the eyes of supervision there is nothing biblically speaking and 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 just societally speaking and maturity speaking there's nothing to produce discipline better than let's see what you're made of when nobody's watching that's correct and so i completely get the concept but the, i think it just gets carried to an extreme in a lot of cases um and 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 even at young ages they're starting to send home so much homework and yeah. it's just like let let's let's create homework assignments that enforce subject matters by getting people into the world getting people out into nature getting people into sports and i mean i learned more from the game of baseball than i ever did from a school simply because the i mean don't get me wrong that's a that's a gross overstatement i, I learned a lot <laughs> in school but 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 from life lesson perspectives the game of baseball taught me a tremendous yeah. amount. Is that, I'm almost sure that baseball didn't teach you how to read. No, it didn't. No, you're right. That's why I said it was a gross over over exaggeration, but it, it felt good in the moment. And so yeah. I just, uh, you so know, you just, so you I'm just, a millennial. Yeah, Glenn. there you go. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I'm an emotional a, a millennial. Quasi, yeah. almost want to be. Hey, yeah. I do have one more thing before I get we get, we run out of time. Um, so speaking of reopening, uh, you know, one of the things that we we're going to lean heavily on parents doing their their pre checks. Mm. But if your child's running a fever, don't send them to school. Don't be stupid. Yeah, just help us out, please. You'll but you'll end bit. up in our idiot of a day and segment. If, and if you've got a uh, if you've got a uh, high school diploma, sign up to substitute. There it is. Sign up to substitute. You're listening to Hometown Heartbeat. We've had Glenn Bryant, uh, principal of Armore High School, on this afternoon or this this morning. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow with Hometown Heartbeat. I am your big beautiful bearded host. See you tomorrow.